Hi, and welcome to Terribly Fun Films. We are continuing with the Dragon Con countdown with a film that is an homage to just about every late 70s and early 80s film I can imagine, as well as being a crazy, amusing horror comedy in its own right, and serving as the directorial debut of one James Gunn. That's right. We're talking about Slither. Stop me if you've heard this one before. A comet crash lands in the forest near a small town. Whereupon investigation, an alien creature comes out and starts killing everybody in the small town. The law enforcement don't know what to do and uh, are trying to figure out the best way to kill said alien life form. If that sounds like Night of the Creeps, Night of the Comet, a thousand and one other films you've already seen, that is partially the point. As the movie Slither is a love letter to the films James Gunn grew up loving and the kind of films he wanted to start making. Dark, twisted, kind of funny, a little bit out there, and while well, none of it's entirely original, uh, there are sources as diverse as the original blob of Steve McQueen, Night of the Comet has already been mentioned, um, the 1970s film Slugs, um, just a whole bunch of different sources kind of combined to make everything. He makes it all work. He makes it work, A, thanks to likable, interesting characters. In a few brief scenes, we understand the trials and tribulations of Michael Rooker and Elizabeth Banks' marriage. We understand Finance and Fillion, even after so many years of not being able to be with her, is still very interested and attracted to Elizabeth Banks. We understand the relationship with his deputies. We, everybody instantly makes sense in a very quick way. And so you like them, and you want to see what's going to happen to them, and you want them to live. Not that everybody does. It is a horror film, after all. But because the characters are so likable, that the unoriginal elements don't matter because we get original characters in these interesting elements that have been combined in a way that really hasn't been done before, which is the other best part of the screenplay. It's not just taking these ideas and doing nothing with them uh, from, again, Slugs, Night of the Comet, yada yada. Um, it's that they're taking these ideas and running with them to a crazy extreme that whether due to just limitations of budget, time period the movies were made, and that sort of thing couldn't happen before with a sort of a satirical edge to it. So things are really like crazy funny. For example, there's a character, the first person missing, one of the first people infected after Michael Rooker basically becomes the alien. Uh, she's just hungry all the time and instead of her just like giving birth to the alien slugs, she actually is eating as a human and gets so big she's roughly the size of a hot air balloon balloon. Not the basket but just the balloon part. Before actually exploding in a very Monty Python-esque way and that's what releases the slugs everywhere. And it's freaking hilarious. Um, Jim's gun might be poking fun of a little bit of some of the cliches and tropes that happens, like the douchey uh, mayor character who never wants to shut anything down. He lives throughout at least most of the film. I don't want to reveal the ending, but still, um, like the kind of first character you would expect to get taken out, like like in Jaws, you want the mayor to die type thing, you know. Um, this the same like hateability to that mayor character here, but you actually start really rooting for him closer to the end of the film. And that's a nice turn. Um, Jim's gun's able to 
but quite some of these things, but also show respect and love and sincerity for these crazy things that he's brought together. And it worked very well. This is directing. I don't know if somebody else could have done it. The script has so much care and love thought into it, so it doesn't just feel like those other films that have been named so many times already within the scripting process. Uh, that to keep it totally consistent and make it work in terms of the comedy, the horror, the more dramatic bits, the characterization. The only person who could really do it and do it justice is the screenwriter and James Gunn does that perfectly here. The film moves very quickly. It's really, really um, impressive to look at. Amazing practical effects. The CGI, on the other hand, doesn't quite hold up so well. Um, given the number of effect shots and the kind of film it is, it was a lower budget studio film in that regard. Uh, so bear that in mind. And maybe when it came out, uh, CGI looked better. I remember not being bothered by it when I saw this in theaters upon its first release. So it's probably just, you know, the movie's 11 years old now, didn't have the highest budget, so CGI, a bit dodgy, but there's so little CGI that that's hardly an issue. There's a real interesting scene that goes from comedy to drama to horror. Um, Michael Rooker and Elizabeth Banks have a fight. He goes out to drink. He meets somebody who used to have a crush on him in, like, high school or so um, at the bar. And they both get real drunk. They wander out into the woods. And at first it's a light-hearted scene where they're bantering back and forth. Yes, he's treating others with banks, but they're still going back and forth being cute and uh, drunkenly stupid and getting ready to have sex out in the, uh, out in the forest. And then he kind of comes to his senses and decides that he can't do this. And he doesn't want to cheat on his wife. He's just angry and drunk. So, we go from that sort of lighthearted comedy bit to that dramatic moment to the scene where alien, um, uh, Michael Rooker becomes the alien. And the scene all together is three to four minutes long from the time they enter the forest to that happening. And that sounds like it might be jumping through a lot of things in terms of the tone, but the tone stays fairly pitch perfect the entire way through and that carries throughout the entire film there's not a scene in the film that feels like it doesn't belong tonally within the characters within the universe as set up by the film everything works swell and when the horror hits it hits hard there's a lot of gore once the slugs come into being and it's a lot of fun and when the dead kind of wake up into a the zombie alien brain slug being controlled type thing. It adds some more humor, adds some more insanity. One of the best bits is when one of uh, the survivors, a, a teenage girl, saves Nathan Fillion's sheriff character, and he just flat out tells her, When I tell this story, it's going to be the other way around. I saved you. And it's hilarious. Yeah, uh, writing and directing basically flawless. Again, some CGI is a bit iffy. But tempo, speed, tone, the night shoots of which this movie mostly takes place at night uh, look really good. Nothing about it does not work. Playing Sheriff Bill Hardy, as you already heard me mention, is Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion's gonna be at Dragon Con. I'm so excited. Nathan Fillion is great. It's a bit of a different role for him. It's He's not some wise, cracking, um, hard, hard-headed, stubborn guy like Mal. He's not some slightly quieter, whip intellectual like in Castle. He comes off as a well-trained, serious uh, police officer, and he is fantastic. Fantastic here. Um, his chemistry with everybody involved is great, but specifically with Elizabeth Banks is amazing. Uh, you buy that they used to have a thing for each other. Uh, you buy that he still kind of has a thing for her. Um, you instantly get it. 
It's fantastic. Elizabeth Banks plays Starla Grant, who is the wife of Michael Rooker's character, Grant Grant, and he's the first one to get attacked by the alien. Uh, she's amazing. Um, I'm not sure if this is like just before she really like made it big uh, with like 30 Rock and that kind of thing, or where this lies in her filmography in terms of when she really became a household name. Uh, but if it is before then, you can definitely see why she did in this film. She is fantastic here. Um, certain scenes just would not work if it were a different person in that role. Um, there's a sequence where she's talking to an amorphous tentacle blob that used to be Michael Rooker and she plays the song they dance to at their wedding and it's a very heavy kind of sweet also terrifying moment and I can't imagine anybody else that lives in the banks playing that so well to make it work make you both be sad and scared for that character at the same time playing Grant Grant is Michael freaking Rooker uh, who will also be at Comic-Con. Um, I planned out my movies uh, and my list and what I was doing for the Dragon Con Countdown before they had finished finalizing people. So I'm not doing a movie for Jules, Jules Lutte and uh, Lena Hetty just had to cancel. I just released her film last week uh, that I was reviewing the contractor. So bear that in mind. So this is of Countdown by Michael Rooker movie from a Dragon Con Countdown. And he's also really damn great here. Uh, before he's the alien, is a really good job of being trapped in something he doesn't totally understand. It's clear he loves his wife, but he doesn't understand why they stopped talking or what happened or how it happened. And he plays that very well, like in the scene in the forest I mentioned. Uh, yeah, he's an asshole for even thinking about cheating on his wife. But he comes to his senses and he plays it well. He then plays his intrigue and interest in the alien, uh, well, he doesn't know it's an alien, but in what he sees out in the forest that does affect him with the alien uh, life form uh, very well. Once he's the alien, he's amazing. Uh, he moves really awkwardly, like the alien's getting used to being in the body. He uh, is slow to speak. He's like scanning the brain, trying to find how to make the most sport, what words are appropriate. It's really interesting. And to see the evolution of him being more common in the alien body and then it morphing into something else and so on is really good. And he owns it, especially when he's basically just a gnarled alien face on a giant blob body. Uh, he's still, it's kind of heartbreaking because. Grant Grant so loves his wife that throughout the film he actively saves her multiple times. Like, there's still a part that's human in there that is trying not to hurt Starla. And that makes it really sweet and makes it even kind of uh, sad in an interesting, romantic, fucked up kind of way. Which is what James Gunn is best at. James Gunn is really great at taking situations and making them a little bit darker, a little bit fucked up, still funny, and still relatable. The teenage um, survivor you heard me mention earlier that saves Nathan Fillion's sheriff character is played by Tanya Solander. Her character's name is Kylie Stripmeyer, and she's fantastic. She's the one who actually discovers the alien backstory, what it does, how it came to Earth, and she plays that up very well. Uh, she doesn't have too many comedic moments. Uh, her story's really kind of horror stuff. But she's a really good here, really likable, and when she does kick ass, it's awesome and gratifying. There is a small role for uh, Jenna Fisher, who was married to James Gunn at the time. I do believe they've since gotten divorced, sadly. A receptionist at the um, sheriff's department person taking the calls. I don't know what else to call that role. I doubt it's called a receptionist, but uh, she's pretty funny. It is weird to hear her use a kind of a strong southern accent. It's not distracting. It's a good accent. It's just 
not how I'm used to Juno and Fisher sounding. But there's some really funny moments, and uh, she gets some fun physical comedy out of that as well. John Axelrad's editing is really, really good. There are one or two moments that are a little too quick to properly follow. Uh, mostly involving when we see the whole slug like creature before it becomes a huge blob trapped in the house. Uh, that involved the CGI, and I think we're trying to cut around it to make it look not quite so cheap and uh, not be on the screen as often. So there are a few sequences that are iffy, but they're so minor and uh, so barely noticeable if you're not looking for them that I think people who don't watch as many movies as I do wouldn't even realize that that weird edit happened. Tyler Bates did score, and it's pretty good. Um, the ending sequence during the climax is really fantastic. Um, and there's a real fun sequence after a sort of a hootenanny type thing uh, that involves the first victim of Michael Rooker's. That's really fun. But... Outside of those two sequences, I don't really remember the score, which is a good and bad thing. That means it's a bit unmemorable, but it also doesn't get in the way of anything. As you've heard me mention time and time again, the um, practical effects are fantastic. The special effects makeup uh, by uh, Dan Crowley, Joe Caldwell, Ken Culver, Christopher Dooley, and just like 20 five million other people look amazing. They hold up well. They move well. So when the characters are opening their mouths with the special effect on, it looks natural and believable and is great. Of course, going along with that are the costumes by Patricia Hargreaves, which are also really good. Um, it's set in the modern day for when the film was made in 2006. So, um, uh, the costumes are fairly easy in that regard, but the more out there stuff, uh, once they get taken over by aliens and that kind of thing, it changes a little bit and everything keeps stylistic sense and works within the small town and that must have been a nightmare to keep track of. Slither just got released on a um, Scream Factory Collections Edition Blu-ray. I highly recommend picking it up. Slither is fantastic amounts of fun virtually flawless. Yes, it borrows from 19 other films that from made from like 1975 through 1992, but it brings it together in an original way with fun characters, great acting, energetic directing, solid, fantastic practical and gore effects, and a general sense of fun that's hard to find. Uh, do be warned though, while it is fun, uh, the movie is Harrowing enough that after I made my wife watch it, she demanded that we watch a comedy of some sort because it's there are really intense horror moments that work in context because everything about the film was so well thought out. As always, I've been your host Bobby. Thank you for watching, and we're continuing Dragon Con countdown next time.